Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lesson 11-6, Multiply Mixed Numbers. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Nelson Mandela, who was a former president of South Africa and passed away recently. He said, one of the most difficult things is not to change society, but to change yourself. Sometimes we get really hung up on that we're not math people, or math is too hard for us, and the great thing about it is we can change that with hard work, and so you can change yourself, but it's hard, but you can do it. Nelson Mandela said so. So, our lesson learning goal tonight is to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions to make them easier to multiply. There's some pictures of him when he was younger. He was actually imprisoned. Um, he was um, trying, he, he was very much about equal rights for all people and blacks in South Africa were not treated on an equal basis as white people in Africa were. So it was kind of his life mission to get that equality established and to end apartheid, which was how they separated the two races and really kept, tried to suppress the black race. So he did some really amazing things and went to prison for about 27 years. You can see him sewing clothes that he had to do as his job in prison, and that's him visiting his prison cell. Our individual lesson learning goals are to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions, to represent any whole numbers as fractions, to multiply the two numerators, multiply the two denominators, that's just multiplying fractions, and then with our answer or our product, we need to convert the improper fractions to mixed numbers or whole numbers. And of course, as always, we have to simplify if needed. Make sure you watch to make sure I simplify or I'll owe you a push up. You may wanna keep that list with you so that you can go through the steps to make sure you've done everything. Um, you can see some great pictures of Nelson Mandela. People across the globe wanted him freed and there were lots and lots of petitions to free him. And eventually he was freed and um, just accomplished amazing great things for both black Africans and, um, and just himself and his life in general. Our vocabulary tonight is a mixed number. Remember, a mixed number includes both a whole number and a fraction. And the term improper fraction, which means when the numerator is larger than the denominator, there is a hidden whole number inside that fraction. So it's not a true fraction because it's not actually less than one. A numerator is the number on top of the fraction, and a denominator is the bottom number of the fraction. There's some just real cool things as he ran for um, the president of South Africa and uh, just won, the, he won a Medal of Freedom, the Nobel Peace Prize, just it had so many great accomplishments. Here's our example. Bella is making two batches of cupcakes. If the recipe calls for three and three-fourths cup sugar for each batch made, how much sugar will Bella need? You can see this could totally happen in your life for real, and you could help your mom do this if she didn't know how to do it. So let's go ahead and learn how. Okay, so I went ahead and wrote down, we have three and three-fourths cups sugar, but we need two of those. So I'm gonna multiply two times three and three-fourths cups. I'm going to write this whole number two here as a fraction. So I'm gonna represent that as two over one, which is equivalent to the whole number two. It's actually an improper fraction, not a true fraction, but it will be easier to multiply this way. And then I'm going to convert my mixed number to an improper fraction as well. So if you remember how we did that, we actually multiply our denominator times the whole number and then add our numerator. So four times three is 12, plus three is 15, and our denominator stays the same. So we'll write 15 fourths here. And look how much easier this will be to multiply because now we can just multiply like we multiply any two fractions. Multiply our numerators. 2 times 15 is 30. And 1 times 4 is 4. But we have an improper fraction. It's not okay for the larger number to be on top. So we're going to send that number home to the house. 4 is going to go knock on the door. 4 won't go into 3, but it goes into 30 7 times. 4 times 7 is 28. 30 minus 28 is two. I don't have anything else to bring down, so that's my remainder. But remember that when we are using fractional amounts, when we're dividing, our remainder becomes our numerator. And our denominator stays the same. It's a four here, so it's a four here. 
but I know I can simplify 2 fourths. I know that 2 is half of 4, so I know that this is actually equivalent to 7 and 1 half cups of sugar. But I want to show you how we get that. So if I draw the 3 and 3 fourths cups that I need for the first batch, I'm going to divide that into four parts and I'm going to color in three of them. So there's three and three-fourths. These three are all full. Three and three-fourths cups of sugar. And then for my second batch, I need three and three-fourths more. So these are all filled in. And then I'm going to divide my three-fourths into four parts and color in three of them. Now, here's where you can see that we can combine some of these because I have six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. But then if I take, for example, this top one right here and move it down here to color this in, now I have one more hole, but I'll use a red to X or a pink to X this out. Pretend like that's not filled in there anymore because I moved that amount down here. You can see now I have two of the four filled in. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two of the four filled in, or two-fourths, which as you can see is also equivalent to one-half, seven and one-half cups. There is Nelson Mandela meeting our President Bush, and I just he just looks like a really happy guy, which I think is pretty amazing considering all the hard things he went through in his life, but he made a lot of sacrifices that made a big difference for a lot of other people. Number one, four and a half times one and one-fourth. I don't want you to have to draw a model for these. Go ahead and just work them using the standard algorithm and um, because they can be lengthy problems. Pause it and push play when you've come up with your answer. Did you write 5 and 5 eighths? It didn't give us a unit of measurement, so we don't have to write that. But we are talking about um, multiplying mixed numbers, so let's go ahead and see how we did that. So I wrote my problem down, four and a half times one and one fourth, and I can see that I have two sets of mixed numbers, so I'm going to have to convert them to improper fractions, and I do that by multiplying the denominator times the whole number. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine, and my denominator stays the same. And now I'll do the same thing here. Four times one is four, plus one is five, and my denominator stays the same as this one. So now I can multiply straight across. Nine times five is 45, and two times four is eight. I can see that I have an improper fraction, so I will send that larger number into the house, and eight's gonna go knock on the door. Eight goes into five, it doesn't, but eight goes into 45 five times. Eight times five, is 40. 45 minus 40 is 5, which is my remainder. So I write that as my numerator and my denominator stays the same. 5 and 5 eighths. I would go ahead and box that because that is my final answer. Number 2. 2 and 3 fourths times 8. Don't let it freak you out that that's a whole number. Remember, we know how to write a whole number as a fraction so that we can multiply it easily. Pause it and push play when you figured it out. Did you write the whole number 22? Let's see how we got that. So I've written my problem 2 and 3 fourths times the whole number 8, and I know that I need to convert that mixed number to an improper fraction, so I'll put my little strategy symbols there. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 plus 3 is 11. And my denominator, my denominator stays the same. Now I want to write 8, the whole number, as a fraction, or an improper fraction would be a better way to say that. So I write 8 over 1. That still is 8, because watch, if I send 8 home and 1 goes to knock on the door, 1 goes into 8, 8, whole times. 1 times 8 is 8. No fractional parts at all. So that's just the whole number 8. Now I'm going to multiply 11 times 8 is 88 and 4 times 1 is 4. 
I know I have an improper fraction here. I could have guessed that I would have one because I know I have two whole numbers, so I know I'm gonna have a whole number of my answer. So I'm going to send 88 home into the house. Four goes and knocks on the door. Four goes into eight two times. Four times two is eight. Eight minus eight is zero. Bring down my other eight. Four goes into eight two times. Four times two is eight. 8 minus 8 is 0. I have no remainder, so I have no fraction because I'm not going to be able to write my numerator or my remainder as a numerator. So 22, the whole number, is my final answer. Box it so it doesn't get mixed up with all those other answers. So here are some more great pictures of Nelson Mandela on money. I always think it's cool. You know, you know you've made it when you've got your picture on money. And there he is laughing with a bunch of kids around him. Number three, Mrs. Gooding walks on her treadmill for one and a half hours each day. I wish. If she walks two and one fifth miles each hour, how many miles does she walk each day? Go ahead and pause it and push play when you've figured it out. Did you write, and you should have given me words because it's a word problem. Mrs. Gooding walks three and three tenths miles each day. Let's see how we figure that out. So now I am trying to figure out if I multiply one and a half hours times two and one fifths of a mile, how much I'll get. And I'm going to convert my mixed numbers into improper fractions to do that. There's my strategy symbols. Two times one is two plus one is three. And my denominator stays the same. And then we'll come to our next mixed number. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. And our denominator stays the same. It's kind of fun to see how all of those fraction lessons that we've been doing all along totally can help us to work out a really tough problem like this. This used to be a problem that 6th graders worked out, not 5th graders. So now we'll multiply our numerators. 3 times 11 is 33. And 2 times 5 is 10. Again, we have a really obviously improper fraction. So 33 is, is the larger number, shouldn't be on top. Send him home, and 10 will go knock on the door. 10 won't go into 3, but 10 goes into 33 three times. 10 times 3 is 30, and 33 minus 30 is 3. So we do have a remainder, which we use as our numerator and our denominator stays the same. I can't simplify that because three is a prime number and it won't divide evenly into 10. So I know that I'm not going to be able to make that fraction reduced at all. So we'll come back over here. We're gonna have to write it below it so we can fit it in here. Three and three tenths. So that is how far Mrs. Gooding actually walked. Mrs. Gooding walked three and three tenths miles in one and a half hours. Wish I walked that much. It's time to challenge yourself. There's Nelson Mandela. He's ready to challenge you too, but not to boxing, to math. So we're going to use that berry pancake recipe. Joel needs to triple, remember triple means three times, his pancake recipe to make enough for all of his friends. How much of each ingredient will he need? And there's the recipe right there on your screen. You'll have to pause it and write that down and then triple all of those amounts. Make sure you come back to class ready to check your answer um, and write down all your notes in your flip journal. Finishing up, there's uh, Nelson Mandela at his most recent birthday party. Go ahead and review your learning goals. Have you mastered all of them? Are there any that were hard for you? Give yourself a three if you've got it, a two if you've just got a few questions that you need answered and you're almost there. Make sure you write those questions down as well. And then a one if you are pretty lost and we'll be there to help you tomorrow. Magnificent mixed numbers. You have completed lesson 11-6, multiply mixed numbers. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.